God's whole mental attitude is the changeless one of love for the whole, an ecstasy for the fulfillment of his desire to create. God, the master playwright, is master creator. The universal play of creation is his imagining. His mental attitude is one of unchanging ecstasy in knowing that the unfoldings of his imagining are true to his law. Even the most minute of microcosmic events which manifest his imaginings unfolds with as strict an observance to universal law as the most majestic event in his heavens. As and when they unfold in accordance with universal law, his ecstasy for the fulfillment of his desire for creating the image forms of his imagining is unchanging. There are no emotions of grief, sorrow, anger, jealousy, or pity in the God mind because of the happenings to any pairs of his creating things. To him it is all good, for all of it is the working of law. Imagine how untrue to the nature of the unchanging God mind to feel the changing emotions of grief, anger, jealousy, and other emotions at the same time in relation to the countless happenings to the infinity of parts in the master playwright's play of creation as manifested in his vast universe. To the creator all is perfection. That which man calls sin and evil are but experiences wherein two unbalanced conditions fail to demonstrate the law of balance by interchanging their two opposed conditions equally. That is all there is to any action whatsoever in God's creating universe. If a machine created by man breaks down because of unbalanced interchange between its opposing parts, or because of overwork or lack of oil to lubricate its parts, we do not think of it as evil or sin committed by the machine, or by its creator or operator. We think of it as breaking the laws which govern the successful operation of the machine, as an accident or as an experience. Such a breakdown of the machine may be due to bad judgment, negligence, ignorance, or other causes, but in every case the cause of it is unbalanced interchange between its opposed interchanging parts and conditions, all traceable to cause and effect. If man learns something from such a breakdown, which will keep him from repeating the cause which led to the accident, he has profited thereby. If he fails to profit by the experience, he will have to again suffer the consequences of it until he does learn to profit by the lesson. In neither case has the thought of sin or evil been connected with the experience. The same principle applies to man's human relations. When these are so extraordinarily out of balance that misery, agony, or death is the resultant effect, man, individually or collectively, gradually learns a lesson which eventually keeps him from repeating the same breaches of the law. In the meantime, man suffers the effects of his breaches of the law individually and collectively by broken friendships, loss of health, failure in business, unhappiness in home, enmities, and countless other ill effects arising from his own creations. These culminate in such colossal disasters as world wars with their consequent wholesale carnage. To relate any of the ills to sins against God is like relating a tornado to a sin against God. The tornado is the effect of unbalance between the two opposite temperature conditions. One condition is attempting to gain supremacy over the other by outbalancing the other. Universal law will not permit this breach of the law between, two, between opposite weather conditions. The resultant damage is the ill effect of this breach just as damage to children's shins is the resultant effect of unbalance between opposite conditions when two children Play and seesaw break the law of rhythmic balanced interchange while manifesting the law of balance in play in that game, or between two men who try to get the better of each other in a business transaction. 
Likewise, God is not angry with earth because it generates an angry tornado, nor is he grievous or sorrowful because of the damage which earth perpetuates upon itself, nor does he threaten the earth with punishment because of such an unbalanced action. Earth punishes itself for that action by the hurt of, of it upon itself. The measure of the hurt is the measure of earth's breach of the law. The tornado is a perfect manifestation of the inevitable working of God's law. It is therefore good even to the hurt of it. All of man's evil and sinful actions are likewise good, even though he is hurt by them. So-called sins and evil relate only to man. To God or nature they do not exist. To God they are but perfect effect of cause. There is naught but good in the light of love from which the universe is begotten. For love cannot beget anything but love. The secret of harmonious human relations lies in a deeper understanding of rhythmic balanced interchange between opposite unbalanced halves of all transactions. Unbalance is necessary in order for interchange to take place, for without two unbalanced conditions, motion could not take place at all. No matter how great the desire is to walk, one cannot do so until he loses his balance by dividing it into two opposite halves to become the basis of a two-way moving cycle. When one unbalances, when one unbalanced half with one unbalanced half, he takes one step and recovers his balance with the other half of the cycle in order to take the next step. If the interchange is equal, he will walk steadily. If not, he will stagger or fall. He has not committed a sin against God or the universe by thus falling. He has merely hurt his own body and gained an experience in so doing. Vapors rising from the ocean are balanced by rains falling into it. The balance of this planet in its orbit is so perfect that an astronomer can tell to the split second where it is at any time or when an eclipse of the sun or the moon will take place. If the earth should vary ever so slightly in its orbit and become out of balance with the other planets in this solar system, its oceans would rise over its highest mountains and sweep all expressions of life from its surface. The perpetuity of creation is based upon the constant giving of one half of a cycle to the other half for the purpose of repeating the creative process through another cycle of giving for regiving. Living things breathe fully outward in order that they may breathe fully inward. Credits at the bank equal their debits. Repayment of credit simultaneously voids an equal debit. Compression in an engine is balanced always by an equal expansion. When an object which has been hurled into the air falls back to earth, it passes every point on its downward journey at the same speed of its upward journey. Human happiness can come only by obeying nature's law of giving in order that the other half of any transaction may equally re-give. The greater one's comprehension of the universal law of love, the greater is one's ability to obey it. There are many mothers who bring grief to themselves and great unhappiness to their children by their sacrificial martyrdom. In truth, they are not giving, they are taking. In the business world, unwise men take more than they give. They do not realize that they are breaking the universal law, which will eventually break them to an equal extent. It may not be balanced in the form of dollars and cents, but in the loss of goodwill upon which their future business depends. Man's ignorance of the law of love is in personal and world relationships will not serve as an excuse to save him from disaster. Wealth cannot be acquired from others by might, for wealth thus taken will impoverish him who takes anything which is not given. Nor can power be thus acquired, for the weakness of the despoiled will prevail against the might of the despoiler. Everywhere in the world this law is seen working out its inexorable certainty. Empires built by might are dissolving. Rich world treasuries are disgorging their gold and piling up debt. The blood of every man killed by the sword has been paid for by ten, perchance ten times ten, of those who 